Hey guys, welcome back. Orbom here, bringing you another episode of our PTCGO live content. Now, today, people, today, I'm giving you some Silk Valley GX. You guys know how much I love Silk Valley. It's literally one of my favorite cards to play. So, answer the comment question today for a chance to get that one, a couple of uh, cards, a couple of codes, PTCGO codes, bleh, English. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit flustered. <laughs> uh, answer the comment question today for a chance to win a couple of PTCGO codes, Lost Thunder codes. Uh, comment question today is going to be. Was one of your favorite cards just in general whether it's aesthetically pleasing or you just love playing the card let me know i think so valley is just a gorgeous looking card so i really like this card a lot so let me know in the comments and below over a chance to win a couple codes also if you want to get yourself a couple codes check out our sponsors at guardian gaming great place to go if you're looking to get yourself codes on the low you can also use code orbomb for a five percent off or something like that so also be on the lookout we're gonna be doing a big giveaway soon anyways <laughs> so valley gx i want to play so valley and there's a couple cards I haven't really recorded with yet for a video, so I was like, let's just throw these cards together. We're gonna have a little bit of fun. So Valley's cool because you have those memories. Uh, they hit a good amount of things for weakness, like Decidueye, and you got Zoark and things like that. So some pretty good stuff in the format. You can hit for weakness with Valley. And now that we have access to Mina, we can play like a fairy type build and uh, attack in like pretty much in one turn. You can just Mina DC turbo drive from from nowhere. So you have this cool little mechanic now to where you can turbo drive. Uh, without having to have any prior setup, which is good in case you're ever coming from behind. So I do like this deck a lot. I did just finish recording like one quick session with this deck, but uh, apparently if I'm not running at minimum 10 draw supporters, I will never ever find draw supporters. So uh, I scrapped that video because it was real. I'll talk about the matches like during the video, but anyways, let's go over the deck. Also, don't forget to drop a like. I always really appreciate it. Support the channel. Good job. Love you guys. You guys are awesome. All right, let's go over the deck. So I'm playing one in Shining Arceus. I like Fable Defense. It's pretty cool. Uh, it's not something, it's not a card I, I use too often, so I can see cutting it. But if you, uh, I do like Ultimate Arrow, um, so 30 damage all of your opponent's Pokemon. I'm kind of taking the spread approach and matches to where I don't have weakness, like uh, like Gardevoir. Gardevoir is kind of big. Attacking with Shining Arceus is really nice versus Gardevoir, but usually it just gets one attack off and then you get blown away. So <laughs> it's just cool because you can turn the odd number even. So with Shining Arceus, it's pretty handy with one attack. So I do like that a lot. So yeah, Shining Arceus is pretty cool. So it's the one up here. The 4-4 line of Type Null and Sylvia GX. I am playing this Type Null. Armor Press does makes you take 30 less damage from attacks, which is really good. I like having the tank. The other one means you do 30 more damage uh, if they have any damage counters on them, which is good in spread. But like, I, I mean, they have the same attack. They have the same, the same attack cost, same HP, same weakness, same retreat. So I want to be the one that's a little bit tankier. That's kind of my mentality. And then for Sylvia GX, I can probably cut one of these Sylvia GX for one Rexy Stretcher. I actually think I will do that, to be honest. Just because uh, we have two Cocos and stuff like that, and I kind of want to be able to cycle them. And then if we play Stretcher, then there's no need to play four Sylvia. So anyways, three Sylvia GX's gyro unit means all your basic Pokemon have no retreat cost, which is pretty cool. Uh, Turbo Drive, you can do 120 damage and accelerate energies. And then Rebel GX is 50 damage, 50 damage for each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. So just like Lycanroc, you can take a big blow up knockout. Now the cool thing about Sylvia is you have these memories. You have Fighting Memory, which makes your uh, Sylvia fighting type. So you can hit things like Zora for weakness. You have Fire Memory, which makes you a fire type, which means you hit Decidueye and other metal Pokemon for weakness. And you have Psychic Memory, which makes you a Psychic type, which means you hit Buzzwell and Necrozma for weakness and any other, any other Psychic weak Pokemon. So that's pretty cool. We also have Electric Memory. Nothing really worth mentioning is weak to Electric, so I'm not gonna bother with that right now um and i know that we're going to be getting water memory and grass memory in the future so be on the lookout for a new video with that that's gonna be exciting i can't wait for those to come out but that probably might come out in the next set so anyways back to why we're playing fairy it's because we have mina like i mentioned earlier mina right here <sighs> does attack to fairy energy from your deck to one of your Pokemon. It doesn't have to be to a fairy Pokemon. It can just be any Pokemon. So it's a great way to accelerate energies. I do like this a lot. Since we are playing Shining Arceus and we are playing two Tapu Kokos, I am choosing to play some Tapu Lele fun. Magical Swap is always good. Psywave is good versus like fairy weak decks like Ultra Necrozma and uh, Rayquaza. So I do like Tapu Lele. I'm also playing this Xerneas Prism, another card we haven't really played yet. Uh, Brighthorns is 160, and if you make this card active through any means, you can move any number of energy from your other Pokemon to this Pokemon. So if you make it active with Guzma, if you just manually switch into it, things like that, you can move energy from your Pokemon to the Xerneas Prism. So it's a really cool card to just slap down. It's your hardest hitting card in the deck outside of GX stacks. That's pretty cool, so I do like it. And then, of course, two Lele's because we can't accelerate our energies onto them. Energy drive is good, Wonder Tag, main reason. That kind of shenanigans. Now we are playing Adventure Bag because it lets you get your memories. So that's really cool. I thought that was a really cool add to Soul Valley decks and I do like that a lot. So we're gonna be playing some Adventure Bag. Let's get any two tool cards from your deck into your hand. So we are playing some tech tools like counter, like counter gain and choice band as well. 
which is why we have those in the deck, but Adventure Bag is cool. Four Nest Ball, so we should be consistent. One Stretcher, four Ultra Ball, four Cynthia, four Guzma, two Judge, and four Lily. The two Judge are good. There's a lot of disruption, a lot of mill, and a lot of unknown hand, and a lot of stage twos. So uh, all those cards, sh Judge should mean that we should be able to disrupt those cards fairly well. That's why I'm playing the Judge. Uh, what two minions, like I mentioned earlier, as well as one Choice Ban. I kind of want to up this to two, for now we're playing one. Uh, two counter gain, two fighting memory, one fire memory, and two psychic memory. I feel like the fire and psychic memory is going to be switched around right now just because the sage is pretty heavy. I think I will actually do that. Just for the time being, because <clears throat> the sage is pretty big in the format right now. And then we have our four, seven line of energies. But that's going to be the deck, guys. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a couple of games. I'll be back when we find one. All right, so hopefully we don't have a horrible time with this deck because... Holy crap, man. Lately, I've been having like a bad time just playing the game. Like unless I'm playing something like crazy, super consistent, like Malamar that has like 10 ball search cards or uh, like something. I don't know. Even like, even like Bacephalon, like it's still one of my favorite decks, but I get stuck sometimes in that deck. Now that deck has a lot less draw supporters. We have so many search cards in that deck that you shouldn't be stuck. So I don't know. We'll see. Hopefully we're not stuck today. We have a lot of insta play cards. We don't play that many energies. Uh, so we shouldn't be clumping up too much, but unfortunately we have this really weird opening hand where we lead Lele. So no more hidden tech Lele. But we do have Judge in our hand as well as Ultra Ball, Nest Ball, Sil Valley as well. So we can actually set up ni quite nicely here. We're playing against Malamar, so that's really good for us. Um, we don't need this. Here's where I wish I had two, psych uh, two Psychic Memories. But let me go ahead and Nest Ball first. To grab a Type No. I think what I'm going to do actually is... Uh, Hmm. I want to keep the Judge, I want to keep the Lily, and I want to keep the Sil Valley. So I'm going to Adventure Back to get Psychic Memory and a Trash Card, so probably a Fire Memory. And then I'm going to toss the Fire Memory and the Fighting Memory with Ultra Ball to grab ourselves another Sil Valley, most likely. I think that's the play. Or another Type Null, I should say. You can also grab Coco, Spreading is pretty good. I mean, Sil Valley is probably going to, like, carry us this game, though, so I think I'm going to grab Type Null instead. Like, it looks like Sil Valley is really going to carry this game. We have one Sil Valley prize. Probably should have checked the rest of my prizes, but it's fine for now. We have both Psychic Memories in the deck, and then we can judge next turn. If we can just get a manual attachment this turn, we did. And if we can, like, top deck another manual attachment, that's going to be really good for us. Because if we do, then we can just meet out and take a knockout next this turn without having to play judge. Uh, yeah, I think we... No, we don't bench another type null because we have two. We have one Sil Valley prize, so there's no real point in doing that quite yet. For now, I'll just pass. If I feel the need to, I can. Uh, I don't want to attach any memories to Lele just to empty them because I usually want to use counter gain on this card. Although I don't foresee myself using this card this game. Like I said, we should be able to just blow everything away with type null. Also, do you guys like the music? I kind of really like this beat. Although it's really repetitive. I might just switch things up. What is that? Is that... Oh, I thought that was Coffee Crickets for a second. Okay, well, that's kind of annoying. So we're going to have to Coco spread at least once. Ugh, I'm not a big fan of that. Not going to lie. Giratina is 130 HP, so it is just outside of our range. We don't have any dark types. Yeah, we'll change the beat here. Wait. I like this beat. Alright, we'll do this one. Lots of Inkays. So he's playing Gear. Oh, he didn't switch though, so that's good for us. Uh, we did not top deck like I wanted though. So we can we're gonna have to try to find a DCE here, I think. I don't know. I'm trying to think of how I want to approach this. Let's go ahead and let's grab a Coco just to have that option. I would love to Mina here, but we obviously don't have any way to draw. Perhaps I should have drawn a Lele. Oh, well. Um, yeah, I think we just have the judge here. Here's where the downside of not having that many energy. Usually we don't need that many energy. Okay, we did get pretty lucky there. I'm not going to lie. But I'll take it, man. Do we have any fair energy down there? We don't. My dude is very expressive today. Uh, I guess... Do I attack with Coco? Like, that's a, that's a tough one. I really want to. I can attack with Coco next turn with, like, Mina and stuff, I guess. So it's not, like, a huge deal. I do want to take knockouts where I can, because it is a one prize attacking deck. If I can knock out a few retreaters, that'd be pretty nice. We'll just go ahead and uh, turbo drive. 
We can always just rebel, like the first Giratina, if it's a problem. So it's not like a huge deal or anything. We have Lily in hand turn, which is really good. And then another Silver Valley. So now we can put down another Type Null. My dude is like super expressive. I'm gonna just give him a, give him a hello. How you doing, buddy? You feeling good today? I hope you're feeling good today. More skateboards. Can he set up a Giratina this turn? He needs a manual attachment into one acceleration, which he does have energies down there already. You can hit me for 130. Uh, if he plays on one more Pokemon, I can just GX it. I think I honestly just do want to GX the uh, the Giratina though, because I don't see anything else I'm going to GX this game. It'd be nice to get rid of like the threat, because that thing is the threat. But I don't. I, if he can't play down another Pokemon, then obviously I can't GX it. So I think he's going to make the smart play and not play down another Pokemon. Kind of awkward, but also fine. Yeah, Shadow Impact, meh. I mean, he he can't damage himself, right? But if he damages Inke, then I can knock it out. I mean, Spread is going to be really good this game. So he damaged the best thing he could, which is smart on my opponent's part. All right, we can evolve into Soul Valley. Uh, we can Mina up a Coco, I think. Yeah, we'll meet up with Coco, and then we'll just flying flip this turn, because uh, it's a little bit unfortunate, but we're not going to be able to attack. The only thing that sucks is that we don't have a free retreat, so we're going to have to pay the retreat cost. It's going to be awkward if we don't draw into what we need, but Coco is just too important here. Uh, yeah, just the DC for now. He'll be able to knock me out here as well, so i got to keep that in mind. So I really need to find a DC next turn, so hopefully we don't have that many prize or any prize at all. It'd be nice if we had none prize. Three cards, we have a 30 card deck. We're gonna be drawing five or six. We might be shuffle drawing. Ideally, we can just find a playable card and just draw five. I like that a little bit more just because that keeps us with a draw support the following turn. Now he can't damage anything except for himself, right? Because then he'll knock this out and Malamar will be knocked out as well. So he's also filling up his bench. I mean, it doesn't matter now because I can just GX him, right? Also, if I find fairy energy in the counter gain, it won't matter, never mind. It won't matter. Let's see if he has Guzma. Because then it will matter. Because Fairy Energy into counter gain means a top of Lele gets to take some knockouts here. Because he'll have a bunch of damage on the board because he's damaging himself. Right? 60. Yep, there it is. 60, 80, 100, 140. That can knock out Giratina. Or we can knock out, like, does he have another skateboard in hand? I guess he does. Unless he's just stalling this turn. Which is also kind of annoying. Oh, he's just going to scoop. Okay, well... I don't really know what he was doing, but <laughs> I'll take it. I, I think we had that game in the back, though. It's just a matter of, like, drawing, right? But with my luck, I'm not too sure. I'm, I'm never sure until after I draw. But we had so many, like, options in that, in that, in that deck, so I don't think we were going to be that bad of a position. I do like the Mina, though, a lot. I think the Mina was really cool there. I just wish we didn't have to pay the retreat cost. <clears throat> we could always play something like Dawn Wings in this deck, just to give you that constant free retreat. Uh, I just don't personally like it because there's all the Zoark in format. I'm just not going to play the Dawn Wings in most games anyways. Not to mention, it's just another GX down with lower HP. Can we not... Can we just lead, like, something useful? I don't want to lead this every game. Uh, we have turn one... Lily, I guess. It's not super great, but whatever. If we're going first, I guess that's all that matters. Hopefully we can get an Ultra Ball here. Although, I don't know what I had Ultra Ball away. Maybe just, like, a Fairy Energy and whatever we top deck. Ugh. This is so bad. This is awful. All right, well, <clears throat> we know we have to keep our fire memories. Let's go ahead and take account of the deck. We have one Coco prized. Uh, we have all of our other Pokemon, right? I feel like we're missing a Pokemon. Maybe not. Well, we have one Coco prized. Um, we have two Cynthia's prized. Oh, that's a big yikes. Two Cynthia's prized. Um, we have Armina. We have two memories prized. Uh, no, one memory prize, one second memory, and a fair energy prized. Okay, cool. We have our DCs. I guess that's what matters the most, right? Uh, he's playing Guardi Decidueye? What is happening? Uh, yikes. I'm not too sure how I feel about that one. This will just throw everything down and play Lily for six. That keeps me on hand, which could be very useful if you don't draw anything. Uh, if you don't draw any energies, I mean. Otherwise, Guzmo's gonna be pretty good as well. So the two supports are pretty good options, but they, uh, and we got DC, but we don't have, ooh. Wow, actually this hand is some garbage. 
Okay, no Ultra Ball, no way to draw, and <laughs> no other Pokemon to play down. No Soul Valley. Huge yikes. Monstrous yikes. And he just passes, so, uh, yeah, oh, oh my, oh, this is just, this is just hurts. This just hurts a lot. Um, we can Armor Press. That doesn't feel good at all. I can Guzma and do a Slashing Claw to knock that out, I guess. That's like the only play we have. Maybe we'll get a Cynthia. We know one in one in three chance to get a Cynthia here. I guess. And yeah, we really don't have any other options. I think I'm gonna remove this Arceus. As much as I wanna keep the, oh my god. As much as I wanna keep the Arceus, I don't think it's very good. Like at least it's it's not very good in the sense that like you're not spending setting it up. He is here, so I don't know why he passed. I guess he just top decked that dude. He must have a dead hand. Gonna Guzma stall me. I mean luckily we have a DC so we can retreat into anything and just continue to slash and claw, and we're both gonna have awkward times this game. Can I can I Oh boy, uh, guys, welcome back to another episode of Pokemon TCGO content. Uh, I'm just gonna Mina here. Can I have one? Oh look, my last fair energy. We have the rest of them in my hand. Who would have thought? Not me. <laughs> what is happening? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh good, a Coco. So still no Cynthia, even though there's two prized. That mind. Can we just like get a just a concession, please? No, he has Decidueye. Guys, he has Decidueye. He is safe unless I top deck a draw supporter, which is probably not going to happen. And then that draw support needs to give me some combination of like Sil Valley and way to get what's it called? Uh, oh, what well, guys? I spoke too soon. Oh boy. <clears throat> All right, so here we can grab Cynthia, one of our two Cynthias, and then we have to find Adventure Back Fire Memory, Sil Valley, or some Ultra Ball, like some combination of those guys. Um, I'm trying to think of where I want to slap down these cards so I can draw them because I do want to win this turn. <clears throat> Whatever. I mean, like, as much as I want to keep the counter gains, it's kind of like all in right now to try to find the combo. Is that fire memory? It is not fire memory. Unfortunate. Uh, there's not much we can do here. I guess we just hit him. So Valley's attack. I want to keep the fighting memory, but I don't think he's playing Zoark. Something tells me that he's not playing Zoark. No fire memory, unfortunately. But we'll just hit him, I guess. Like, not much else we can do here. Except for attack. It's not misclick rebel. I did I did that in my last recording. Oh, my last recording was wild, right? So I, beforehand, I was only playing uh, one Probably should put that on Lily. Beforehand, I was only playing um, three Lilies instead of four. I upped, it, I upped it to four now, but beforehand, I was only playing three Lilies. And, and there's this crazy Guardi game where I was just spreading constantly. Just non-stop Coco flips and Arceus spread and just trying to put him in range. This, this dude played two max potions. Like he, he won the game only because like I played all those draw supporters. Didn't find a single one. I was like 20 cards up to my deck. Didn't find a single one. Also only found one Fairy Energy that whole game. I didn't up my fair energy count. I'm still playing seven, but like I didn't find one fair energy that whole game and I never found a draw supporter. So I was in position to win the game because I took like two knockouts on baby Pokemon with my spreading, but I was in position to win the game. Even though he played his two max potions, all I had to do was find Tapu Lele, the baby one and uh, fair energy. So because we had the counter gain in hand, we had the nest ball in hand. So we could have found everything that we needed, but we were still missing the important part. And the important part was finding a draw supporter so I could have found those pieces. But unfortunately, we did not. All I had to do was either top deck a fair energy or a draw supporter. That is, there is, so, so there were six fair energies. Actually, there might have been one prize. But I know there was no draw supporters prize because I checked earlier in the game. But that's why I didn't bother ultra balling for a Lele at some point. Because I was like, whatever, I'm going to need a draw supporter. There's like nine in here. It's okay. But there was nine draw supporters. Oh, this is, oh, this hand is almost good. <laughs> uh, this is kind of an awkward hand. I know these decks don't usually play blower. So I'm just going to adventure back here and I want to play Lily. That's the thing, right? So let's adventure back. Let's grab my one psychic memory and that's it. I think I don't want to play down any other memories. I'm going to Lily only because it's a bad idea. I think but we draw four. I mean, we have a bunch of, we have 11 energies in this deck. Thank you. All I needed was one. That's all I needed. Um, I can set that up and that could be really good versus the majority of his deck. We have Silvalli into a 
Cynthia or Mina, depending on what we top deck, because Mina could be pretty good to just set us up to attack. But we have the Psychic Memory attached already, so we're pretty set to just attack and take a knockout on this Necrozma if he doesn't switch it out, which he probably won't. He did awkwardly lead it. Like, leading the Necrozma is, like, the worst, but I'm going to take complete advantage of it. But anyways, yeah, that, that game was ridiculous. I had, like, 150 damage. 100, yeah, 150 because I attacked once with Arceus on two Nine Tails. He only had one Guardian the entire game, but two Swampert's. 100, 150 damage on Swampert's. And then he max potion one Swampert. But then I put more damage onto it at some point. Um, I knocked out his Ditto. I knocked out his Ralts. And I'm just sitting there just like, all right, anytime now, I'll have game. Because I've had Nest Ball since like turn one. Waiting to slap it down whenever I need to play Top Lele. It wasn't a deck. I checked. All I need now, I have the counter gain in hand. All I need right now is a nice, beautiful, wonderful, lovely, attractive, fair energy. Maybe a draw support to help me get it. I don't know. <laughs> Did not happen. And then I donked some Lost March player. This is like, I mean, this deck was already really good versus Lost March, so it's not like a huge deal. So he's not retreating this turn, so that's pretty good for us. All we have to do is draw a DCE. Can we do it? I really hope we can. I should have checked my deck. I didn't check my deck for prizes. Marshadow, I mean, we can spread. So that's pretty cool. This is a really good spreader, this game. Oh, he's playing Marshadow on us. Oh, oh, I don't know why I just saw Marshadow. I was just like, whatever. Uh, we need to get some DC Soul Valleys. Oh, nice. Well, we got it. <laughs> Not much else to say there. Maybe we can get a draw supporter to go with it, but like, we get a knockout this turn, and then he can't do much about it afterwards. So uh, I'll take that money. Another type normal too. That's pretty good. And we'll just take two prizes here and hope those two prizes can send can take me somewhere. Uh, turbo Drive. Ba boom. And this thing just kind of solos this matchup. That's the cool thing about uh, this card. It actually really does solo this sound matchup pretty well. Um, it's hard for him to take knockouts. The only thing that's a problem is Giratina, but you, if you do like a, if you're going to be spreading at some point, right? So if you spread with Coco, you'll put Co you'll put those Giratinas in range, and then uh, you just continue to just go back and forth between spreading with Coco, taking knockouts of Valley, and then when you're spreading with Coco, you're doing really good because if they are attacking with Giratina, they're damaging themselves too, which means your top of Lele promo or your baby top of Lele ends up really working hard. Um, <clears throat> this game so we only have one psychic memory so these other memories are kind of are kind of kind of whack but there's no one i want to attach these memories to because i usually want to attach counter gain or potentially a choice band to some of these cards too so i don't know i don't know right now we'll see what happens i mean counter gain is not going to be pretty useful if we're going to continue to take knockouts but there's malamar does he have the giratina does he have the boy it's not down there uh, there's a stretcher though. He can't get into Krozma. If he sets up another Malamar, I guess he could just blow me up, but he's grabbing Malamar instead. Uh, well, he can't blow me up because he has to manually touch the active orb, maybe find like a switch card or something like that. Here comes Lele, I'm assuming, or maybe another Marshadow. Oh, just Giratina straight up. So he's just going to play down that Giratina and just start setting it up. So here's where I'm talking about where I think spread would be pretty good right now, but... We need dark memory, man. We just need all the types. Give us all the types so that I can make Soul Valley bro broken. I would love to have Soul Valley busted. I know we're getting a water and a grass memory soon. Uh, we've already had those released in Japan. So I don't know if they're released in Japan yet, but we already know they're coming. So that's pretty cool. That's going to be really good for like Lycanroc matchups and uh, water matchups and things like that. It's still nothing, unfortunately, for us. But we get another attack, so that's pretty cool. Hmm... Then we put the fairy energy here and have and hold on to this DC for the time being. So if he top decks an energy, he can attack me with Giratina, and that's gonna be awkward, but whatever. If I had Guzma, I would have totally knocked out Giratina this turn because I'm not a big fan of this thing. I would have GX it 100 percent But we can't GX it now. Let's see if he top decks. Can you do it, my dude? I believe in you. This deck is really good at top decking, because you usually are digging through your deck most of the time, anyways. Uh, I don't know what he's doing. He might have just drawn a Guzma and he's debating if he wants to Guzma something. But the only thing he can Guzma is still by... Oh, he drew a DCE, so he's just going to attack me this turn. He's going to get the 2 of KO. Um, damage something on of his own. Psychic Recharge to have that Retreat option ready, to him, ready for him. Since I doubt he'll have Guzma... No, there's no point. I'm just trying to think if I should Retreat, but I think I should just let him knock me out. The problem with letting him knock me out is that, like... He's gonna get two more cards, but I can't really do much about it. Like, what can I do? Ooh, Lily, that's a, that's a thing I can do. Well, I guess we'll waste this down now. We'll throw this here, and we'll just do the do. 
counter gain is kind of worthless. Uh, it's, I mean, yeah, it's kind of worthless right now. Can I? No, I can't. And now I don't want to let him knock me out. How many DCs are left? We have two more left in the deck. So I think I will just spread this turn. Uh, baby Lele, I think. Just to have that fear. I'm not, probably not going to use it, but having that fear is going to be really good for us. Yep. And now if he, like, puts damage on this Malamar, he'll knock it out, which means that... Um, which means that uh, Spell Tag won't activate, which is good. He wants me to activate Spell Tag at some point, so we'll see what happens. Trying to punishment, that's annoying. <laughs> I removed my Ace of Rollers from this deck because I never use them, but that's pretty bad. I'm not gonna lie, that's pretty bad. Damaging himself, so now he's in range of this. I guess he was in range beforehand, so he doesn't care anymore. I know that if I knock it out with Baby Lele, it doesn't activate the spell tag, so that's something to keep in mind. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanna grab. I could Ultra Ball away this and Guzma and just have it ready for like Stretcher in the future. I can Guzma this turn, but that kind of feels pointless. I need to get a draw supporter. Yeah, I'm just gonna throw these away for now because I can just stretch them back with later if I need to. And uh, do I wanna grab this? If we get another Fair Energy, that is a knockout. So Xerneas Prism is pretty cool this matchup. Take some big knockouts later. Uh, do we have any Fair Energies down here? We do not. We need to find either a Fair Energy or a DC here. We got the DC. I guess I'm attacking with like <laughs> this. So I don't know. Um, I just don't know really. Just grab some memories for the heck of it. Get them out of the deck. We can slap them down if we need to later. Hmm. Because we're gonna have to use DC this turn. We'll take a knockout on Giratina because he's in this weird position. But if I attack with this one, then it's going to be knocked down. I'm going to be sad. So I think I have to attack with this one. I was really, really hoping. 190, 200. So what I need to, what needs to happen next turn is I have to find another fair energy. And I have to make some plays happen. I have to, oh wait a minute, no, he'll knock me out. No, I get knocked out this turn, never mind. There's no plays I can make happen. Because uh, he'll just use Giratina to knock me out with this thing. So I'm going to be knocked out regardless. Because what I wanted to do is I wanted to attack with Xerneas this turn so I can remove the fair energy off this right now. But it's not happening, so whatever. No Guzman hand is kind of awkward. Uh, no way to attack with Lele right away. Mm. Mm -hmm. I think I'm just going to attach Choice Band to this, because that feels like the right Pokemon to attach it to. But yeah, he'll knock this out. I don't know if he wants to do that, because like it's going to be knocked out regardless, unless he's really afraid of Max Potion or Acerola. Uh, but he could. There's no reason, I don't see a reason for him not to. Maybe to remove the energy right away. Yeah, he's going to do it right now. This thing being damaged is kind of smart. He needs to Malamar twice, which means he can attack me the following turn. I just need to have to take one more knockout, so I have to keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> he's also going to be putting me in range of things with Malamar, which is really cool because spell tags a thing still. So that's really dope for my opponent. But does he have anything to play in his hand right now? I'm assuming he manually attached because there's no way he can have two energies otherwise. So he can't manually attach to retreat this thing. So he's just letting me to be knocked out here. And then he's going to take another two prizes off me. Ooh, this is, this is going to be kind of close. Be careful. That's a fair energy in the discard pile, so I can attach that somewhere. An attack here. Another fair energy manually attached. So that's pretty cool. No Mina in hand though. Uh, no way to get something useful. Let's see here. Uh, we can grab another type null. Do we judge? That kind of feels worthless. Does he have a fighting resistance? He has a. He does have a fighting resistance. So I, got, I can't just attach that there. Hmm, just trying to think of what I want to do here. Cynthia kind of guarantees me an energy for the following turn. 
And if I can get a fairy energy, so he can put four here, which would be five. It's gonna cut it close. I can attach an energy with my attack. I have to find a fairy energy the next turn, right? That's how I win this game. So I'm gonna attach that there even though I shouldn't. And I'm gonna Cynthia even though I shouldn't, but I need to, if I can find a fairy energy, which I do, if I can keep this fairy energy attached, then if I can keep all the fairy energies on board besides the one of my active attached, then I win the game next turn, right? My bulkiest Pokemon is definitely this, so we'll attach it to that. And I think we win the game next turn, because we just make it active by switching into it. We move all the energies from our Pokemon, manually attach and attack with Xerneas. So Xerneas is coming through right now. Uh, but yeah, this matchup is usually free, but he's, oh, he's weakening it right now. Is he going to, ooh, that's a good play. That could literally lose us the game. If he Guzmas this up next turn, oh, that's problematic, actually. I didn't think about that play. But I have Guzman in hand too, so if he if he if he knocks out something, something will be knocked out in return. Not a huge deal there. As long as he doesn't like both Marsh Shadow and Guzman me at the same time, which is very unlikely because he's definitely play like one Marsh Shadow, because you don't have the bench space to play multiple Marsh Shadows. Um He didn't put me in range of knockout though, so I don't know if he's just trying to I don't know what he's trying to do actually. Unless he gets like another Giratina, maybe he's banking on that. But like he can't use Giratina to damage the active, so he's only gonna hit me for 130. Which means I win, right? Regardless, I can just attack him. I have Guzma. I have Lele. I have this Xerneas, I mean. I don't know. I don't know what he's trying to do. Let's see if he has the uh, Guzma, though. If he, uh, the uh, Marsh Shadow, I mean. Does he have the Marsh Shadow, or what's he going to grab here? Just like another Giratina? Oh, top of Lele. Ooh, that's kind of cool, but he doesn't have enough damage on the board to really make that matter. <clears throat> hmm. How long have I been recording? Am I even recording? Oh, yeah, I am recording. That'd be like a big pain if I wasn't recording. I can probably get one more game after this. I'll have to head out like really soon. All right. Well, let's see what he can do. There's a Coco. Big boy Coco. Uh, he's not taking a knockout this turn, so I think I just win. He just also benched something so I can just GX instead. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, he can knock me out in return, but that's all he can do. Like he, well, he he can't tie the game, so we're gonna win regardless. There we go. Right, that's just GG. I don't know why he shouldn't have benched anything, because that's like guaranteed his loss since he's not taking a knockout here. Unless he like whipped out the Kikui out of nowhere, uh, which he can't do anymore. But beforehand. But once again, we have so many outs. We're fine. So Zernia's Prism putting in the work of existing, even though it's not gonna win us the game right now. Boom. All right, there we go. Let's get one more game. I would like to play against like Zoark, Decidueye, and like have a real game versus them because uh, this game, this deck just throttles that deck and I love that. <laughs> He's gonna take his prizes anyways, so that's fine. <clears throat> Ooh, I, need, I need to prepare for this Pokemon Go thing that's coming up. Uh, go Coco. I don't know why this is happening. There we go. Thank you, sir. Let me play my game. All right, let's get one more game here. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah, gear team is a problem. Uh, maybe like Kakui's would be pretty cool in this deck. I don't know. Is there a way to like increase our damage output by like just one? That'd be kind of nice. Just like a little, like, little 10 in increase. We could play like electric memory and then electro power. Some wild stuff, some shenanigans. All right, let's go, let's go, let's go first. Uh, why is he sad? I'm sorry that you're sad, my dude. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, I don't have a lead if it makes you feel better. And we're going second, which is good. I mean, first, which is good. So we can get our evolutions up, start setting up our board. And we lead Coco. Dude, this hand is almost good. If we just had a single draw supporter, this hand would be like as good as it could be. But we don't. So that's just the pain of me playing Pokemon right now. 10 draw supporters isn't enough. How many are we playing? We have two Judge, and then we have four, four line of Cynthia Guzma. So we just don't ever draw what we need. What is, what is this? Is this the mill? Like this is ability lock, right? Huh? Okay. Uh, we'll pass <laughs> and hope for the best here. This is the thing that locks abilities if it's active, I think. So I don't know what this deck is, but if we can find fighting memory, we're fine. 
I'm sure he's playing like some sort of like energy disruption, so we have to keep that in mind as well. But energy disruption is not a huge deal as long as we can charge up. And now that we have Mina, we can charge up from we can go from zero to 100 really quickly. He's playing nine tails with this deck too. I wish there was a metal memory man. But I don't think I don't think there's any metal weak ultra beast. Is is Nihiligo metal weak? It's rock poison. I thought poison resisted metal. Uh, if that's the case, and he's not metal weak. Uh, Bicephalon's not. Stack attack is not. Uh, Naganadel is not. And neither are the originals. Buzzwell, Faramosa, Zerkatri, Kartana, Guzzlord. Yeah, none of them are metal weak. So, I like the idea of playing the, the stadium. Although the stadium only makes you have a 2 or 3 cost. So I'm pretty sure Slacking has a 4 or 3 cost. So he's playing Malamar Slacking. That's... That's something. I don't know how far I've fallen, bro, but this is wild. Do you have turn one Lily? Because that'd be lit. Maybe I just have to start running like 5 million acro bikes. Maybe that's just what I need to start doing in all my decks. Just, just play 7, 10 copies of acro bikes and hope for the best. Acro bikes wouldn't be bad in this deck either. So it's not like a horrible thing. You can put those fair energies in the discard a little bit easier. They're just kind of rough because there's so many pieces, like so many one ofs in this deck you don't want to lose. So playing acro bike is always kind of hard. Uh, but unfortunately, we went first and have achieved nothing. So, you know, best case scenario, we can top deck a draw supporter. The draw supporter gets us DCE, and then we can just attack and take knockouts. That'd be cool. Let's try that. I would like that. That seems like fun. This man has gone through quite a bit of his deck. Am I about to get a claw? I'm about, I'm about, I'm about to get to catch the claw. No, he's just going to retreat to Vulpix. Okay. Uh, once again, we don't really care about our abilities as long as we have a Coco down because Coco is our free retreat regardless of our ability or not. So I think we have to avoid playing down Shining Arceus though. Actually, does that matter? It does kind of matter. It's a pretty heavy card, so we don't want to play that down. Type Nulls are kind of rough too. I don't know. It's weird. It's definitely weird. Slacking Nine Tails. I get some rare candy. It's just slacking. All right, let's see. Oh, nice. We Ultra Balled, so that's pretty cool. Uh, we don't need fire memory and i don't think we're gonna need arceus as much as i want to tackle arceus i think arceus is gonna be actually just removed from the deck altogether here in a second uh lele and i think we grab i want to grab judge to be honest he has a big fat hand full of stuff and i'm kind of greedy but i shouldn't be greedy because i think we we're gonna win anyways <laughs> as long as we can get a dce although like the chances of me getting a dce are fairly low regardless so maybe i should just grab the judge Will slowing him down matter that much? Once, I, I, I shouldn't slow him down because it doesn't matter. I don't know how much slacking does as far as damage though. Uh, but I don't think slowing him down matters because like I said, we have our free retreater in Coco already. And uh, if we can take a knockout Vulpix, that means he can't even use Ninetales. And we got the DC. Dude, we're apparently our DC luck is wild today. So, I mean, no complaints here. Another free retreater down in case he tar targets one of ours. And we can turbo drive here. And boom, there we go. We're set. And another fair energy. If we can discard one, we can accelerate it, attach one here, hold on to these for DCE targets. Uh, Lele being down is kind of awkward. Having a, another another Sylvalian hand is kind of awkward too. But dude, we're pretty, apparently, for, I mean, we've been drawing DCs pretty well today, so I'm not even that upset. Maybe I should have judged and just banked on the DC luck. Malamar. So he doesn't have... He didn't grab the... Uh, well, I mean, what can I say? He already has Ninetales in hand, or Rick in hand, so he's fine there. I don't know what Ninetales would have done for him then. Alright, so this thing turns off abilities, right? Your opponent's Pokemon in play have no abilities except for Lazy. It's got an edgy from this Pokemon. It can't attack during your next turn. So he can hit me for like a big whopping 160. That's pretty cool. And now he just has to re remove one energy to retreat. It's not too bad. Strategy's kind of cool. And then he has this to move things around too. Because he has abilities. I keep forgetting it's one-sided ability lock. That's pretty dope actually. But its attack is kind of meh. I mean, its attack's pretty good. It's actually a pretty cool card if you can set it up. But I don't know. If this feels like a lot of work. I honestly kind of want to play this with the whole DC Mina engine, to be honest. Because that seems really dope. And can, I, I, yeah, I kind of like the idea a little bit. We'll see what happens for now. He's gonna attack me this turn. I need to try to find. I need to try to find. Uh, what's it called? A. Uh, I'm probably just gonna GX it to be honest. A big old threat. 
So then he can attack me with this, which is annoying. And I don't have any way to beat that. So I think I'm gonna actually save my GX attack for this card instead. Uh, so how am I gonna beat this if that's gonna be the case? We'll see what happens. Can I get a fighting memory or adventure bag? That'd be best case scenario. Although it does make it harder to knock that out. It's still pretty decent. Uh, Mina's not super great right now, but it will be good next turn. I do really like Mina for next turn. For now we're just Lily, because then we can set up a Sylvia to take a knockout. Psych memory is not great. <clears throat> not at all. Not right now at least, so... Do we give him the knockout? I guess we I guess we don't really have a choice. I could have Coco spread this turn, but that doesn't really help me. So we'll just uh, turbo drive. I want to save Rebel, because he's going to take a knockout with this at some point, right? So uh, I'm assuming... I'm assuming he's going to put this back in to knock me out, and then he's going to GX me. No, he can't GX me, because then we'll... No, yeah, because he'll be ahead on prizes. Oh, we'll be even on prizes after I knock out this thing. So, uh, yeah, he can't GX me. So that's pretty good for us. But I'll have an attack already, at least. It's a cool little engine. Uh, it, it would matter a little bit more if I was based off abilities. And it, this card would be really good if it was like easier to set up, right? Because then you could stop things like Sidri. But it's really hard to get this turn to consistently while your opponent... And you have to go first, too. So it's like a bunch of awkward. Like a lot of awkwardness. We can accelerate one energy probably onto a Coco, maybe. I'm not too sure. This is free retreat, so we'll just stick with this. All right, let's see what we can do in our last match for the game. Mina's a good top deck, but it's not going to get us where we want to go. I think I will grab another Type Null, though, and just charge it up to that thing since we have Sylvalli in hand. That seems like a pretty good play, because then we can find DC. Oh, wait a minute. We have to do this. Yeah. Almost made a mistake, but it's okay. Mina, please don't have anything. Okay, cool. Imagine if I had the last two energy spreads. That's what that, that's where my heart attack almost happened. Uh, but yeah, there we go. And now we can go ahead and turbo drive and accelerate onto our benched Sil Valley or type null, which will be Sil Valley next turn. And the psychic memory is kind of worthless because that is dark weak, so it's not gonna help us there. So we're probably just gonna GX there. Of course we drew a type null, but that's fine. Not a big deal there. So this comes in and attacks us. Um, it's gonna not do much, I guess. I mean, but he can damage us. We can GX it in return, take two prizes, and uh, just go from there. Does he have a rare candy in hand? That'd be wild. But then like, he would need a manual attachment. He needs rare candy manual attachment. Then he can attack me again, which is gonna be just horrible. So annoying. I have to find Finding Memory, which shouldn't be that hard to find. And since we're gonna be accelerating onto this type null anyways, it's not like a huge deal. We still have this that can take knockouts later. So he has Lily. So he's going to try to find rare candy. I don't know if he actually grabbed the thing, the uh, slacking, but he might have. If you guys have any interesting decks like this, let me know in the comments down below. Because that's, that's all I've been uploading lately. It's just fun, interesting decks. We're getting to that point in the meta where I'm just going to be going between like really competitive meta decks that I'm working on currently for like tournaments and then playing stuff like this, like fun stuff that's really cool. Um... Oh, he has the red candy. He did pull it off. Does he have a manual attachment, though? He does not have a manual attachment. Okay, so it looks like this is going to be attacking us, which means we do get our GX attack off this game. And we can save fighting memories for the bench. So that's pretty cool. We get to take two prizes. He'll take another two, and then we'll just keep going from there, I think. I think that's the game plan. Since this will be knocked out, I'm probably just going to attach a Psychic Memory to it, just to get rid of it. Ultra Ball is pretty good too, we can toss a... I think we just toss Type Null actually, I don't think we need another one. Uh, do we have a Fairy Energy down there? We don't. So I'm actually going to toss this Fairy Energy as well. Yeah, just to, just to just continue thinning my hand. We can grab a... Xerneas is actually going to be pretty good. Uh, let me actually grab Xerneas. I'll throw it down. I don't see a reason to not throw it down. They can Oko the uh, slacking. Click memory here. And uh, yeah. If he targets it down, that means our Sylvalli survives. Any fighting memories yet? No adventure balls. <laughs> but a bunch of these things. So, uh, kind of awkward. Then we attach a fire and fairy memory to fairy energy to Xerneas. It's the tankiest Pokemon we have that won't be knocked out by Choice Band. So I think we attach it there. I hold on to the DC as a option for Sylvalli. 
Actually, we're not touching anything this turn, so I gotta keep that in mind. Never mind. Um, that means, oh yeah, that's gonna be kind of awkward, actually. We still need to find <laughs> stupid thing, but it's fine. We'll find it. We have Adventure Bag in the deck. We have two Adventure Bags, because we haven't played any yet. And um, we might get stuff off the prize as well, but we'll just Rebel GX here. Take a big knockout. And hopefully these two prizes will help us win the game. Please and thank you. Ultra Ball and Judge will not help us win the game. But we can Ultra Ball away this and Type Null. And we can play all three Nest Balls to whip them all. Maybe land one. And uh, hopefully, out of a 24 card, maybe a 22 card if we get if we get a card off the Nest Ball. 22 card deck, we should maybe be able to find a Fighting Memory. And that should potentially close out the game because he doesn't have much else on the board. Unless he has like an Oko card, he can just slap down like Necrozma. That could be problematic. Ooh, Necrozma sounds scary. And you know, I, I reduced the count from two Psychic Memories to one because I thought I was going to see a lot more Decidueyes, and that just did not happen. <laughs> Lots of Malamar instead. You got that manual attachment. Do you got it? Um, so unless I top deck Mina, which isn't... No, it, can't, it won't even work that way either. Never mind. I was just trying to think of ways I could attack with this card this turn, but it's not happening because I didn't use my other attack, my turbo drive. I just assume every time I attack with this card, I'm going to be accelerating energy, but I forgot I was going to use Rebel that turn. So uh, that means Xerneas is not attacking this turn. And hopefully, is he, is he missing a manual attachment? That'd be whack because <clears throat> he doesn't have Dawn Wings down either. And if he manually attaches the Dawn Wings, then he's not going to be manually attaching here. So it looks like he's actually not taking a knockout this turn, which is horrible for my opponent, but great for me. <laughs> Especially if I top take a Guzma. Oof, I can Guzma and move all the energies onto this and then take a knockout on that. That'd be lit. I'm not going to lie. So he's manually attaching there, but he doesn't have a switch card. So top decks. Oh, there's Adventure Bag finally. Um, well, we can't really do much here. I could retreat. Or I think I just turbo drive this turn, I guess. I don't know. Like, this is a pretty bad time for me. I guess we're going to deck it anyway, so let's go ahead and grab these cards. And, I mean, Baby Lele can win us the game, I guess. Sure. I'll grab it, get out of the deck. I'm trying to think if there's anything I really want to do this turn. And I don't think there is. Just want to turbo drive so I can take a knockout with this so that my bench still value is safe. I would need to find a fair energy to manually attach, but this is just really awkward. I could retreat the Sil Valley and go into this. I kind of like that a little bit more, to be honest. Let me do that. Let me retreat to this one so my damaged one is safe ish. We'll hold on to the rest of these cards in my hand. We'll just go ahead and turbo drive and accelerate an energy, fair energy here. And all we need to do is find a manual attachment. Put that there. So the plays are still the same. We have one, two, three. We only have two down here, I believe. Yep, four, five. So we have two more fair energies in the deck somewhere. I think there was one prize, but I think we already grabbed it too. I didn't actually, I don't think about the crabs, the cards I grab off my prizes. Um, this is a Guzma target now as well. I mean, if he makes, so if he makes this active, then Guzma is not really a thing. But we can't lay it for Guzma, at least we have the top deck of Guzma. But we should be able to thin our hand down by quite a bit. We have Adventure Bag too, so we can thin our deck down by using Adventure Bag. And take a knockout on this thingy, on this thing here, which is good. He's really thinking about this turn. I'm thinking he wants to try to get Guzma, uh, or I guess he's just going to attack me. Does he have like a spread attack? Oh, the Krozma GX would be wild if he whips that out here. Oh, that'd be so upsetting if he whipped that out. Oh, he does have the Guzma. Okay. So he's just getting this ready for uh, potential plays in the future. Does he have more fair energies down there? He has three more, so we can actually set this up to take a knockout too. But I think if everything goes well, we can just attack with uh, good old Xerneas this turn. And that means he would have to get a bunch of energies like a manual attachment and everything to take a knockout this as well as guzma so hopefully that doesn't be the case oh we top deck guzma so don't we just win oh uh, well that makes everything boring <laughs> i wanted to play it my way uh all right we'll just play the safe route because he can win if i don't do this like in the crossman play would be very bad so we'll just go ahead and just win the game here unfortunate i really wanted to win like the cool way but it's fine the cool way is the risky way <laughs> for sure uh i don't want to do all this whatever here we are 
We did have a fairy energy prize. Okay, cool. So we had one in the deck, so we had to draw like really well off that Zendia. But anyways, there we go. That's the deck. <laughs> it was fun. I mean, I got to play Soul Valley. That's what I like. I love playing Soul Valley. It's a lot of fun to play. I just love having the access to multiple different, um, multiple different uh, typings that we can abuse. Of course, right now it's kind of in a weird place because you have you hit all the main decks for weakness, except for Blacephalon and Gardevoir. So it's like really bad. <laughs> it's not great. Uh, we can go back to playing my Water, my uh, Water Soul Valley decklist from the past. And we can just spin in some Aqua Patches, and then we have Free Retreat with Soul Valley. But then like, not gonna do Quagsire is a thing, and that's just kind of better, right? Um. In the sense that, like, because you can play Onyx and Nogana Del Quagsire, and then you hit that Fighting Weakness, too. So, you know, it's whatever. It's fun. Regardless, I like playing Savali. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this deck. Don't forget to drop a like, subscribe, share, all that good jazz. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace.